Hey everyone, what's going on? I'm back with another video, and today we're checking out the TC777 microphone from Toner. Huge thank you, actually, to Toner for sending me this product to check out and review. If you're working from home or a gamer or a beginner streamer and you're looking to up your audio quality, because, well, let's face it, webcam mics and built-in headset mics generally aren't that great. Well then, watch this video and consider picking up this $40 microphone. Let's start with the unboxing. It's not the best unboxing experience, but it doesn't matter as long as the product is good. Of course, we've got instructions and paperwork. Then we've got the pop filter, which is made of plastic over nylon. Then the microphone itself, which comes attached to the shock mount and the stand. And the windsock also comes attached, which is nice. It's a simple unboxing experience. That's all I can really say about that. Now let's talk about the build quality. It's an all plastic build. I mean, there's some metal there, but it's not enough metal to consider it a metal build. On the bottom, it's got rubber feet, which is nice because it makes sure that it doesn't scratch your desk. And the rubber helps absorb a little bit of the shock that would come from tapping on your desk. And then we've got the shock mount itself, which is made of plastic. And then the bands holding the mic in place are made of rubber. It also comes with a pre-attached metal pop filter arm here. I kind of wish that this arm was removable, but it's not, it's built into the shock mount. But something that is removable though, are the legs. You just unscrew this and then you can attach it to any microphone arm that you have and just use that. The microphone is this soft touch plastic in a really nice blue color. And on the front, as you can see, it just says toner here. One of the nice things is that this microphone can kind of fold down into a relatively small form factor. And whenever you're not using this microphone, you can just put it away in a drawer or something. And if anything were to go wrong, say uh, it arrives damaged or the wire suddenly breaks on you or whatnot, it does come with a two year warranty. I'm gonna be honest here for a second. This microphone is cheap price-wise. That's why they decided to use plastic. They cut the cost for the consumers, not at the expense of the consumers. That's why they use such cheap materials. But personally, I'm okay with this. As long as the product delivers on its intended function and purpose, then that's fine. In this particular example, as long as the microphone sounds good and delivers on what it's supposed to do, then it doesn't matter what it's made out of as long as it sounds good. So right now I'm gonna give you the technical specifications of the microphone and give you a little bit of background as to how it should sound. And then afterwards we'll go and do the actual sound test. So this microphone has a cardioid pattern, which is great for gamers, streamers, Zoom calls, and even podcasts, as it will pick up anything that's directly in front of the mic and then a little bit on the sides. Here are the specs. But the thing is, if you're really into microphones and looking at the technical specifications of things, then you're probably not gonna be purchasing this budget microphone. There's no gain dial or mic sensitivity dial to adjust for the microphone, but that doesn't really matter considering that it's USB and when you plug it in, you can always just adjust it in whatever program you're using, whether that's Zoom, Discord, Streamlabs, OBS, and whatnot. As for the sound test, here's a clip of me playing Among Us with my friends on my stream, Take into account that I accidentally leveled the microphone too high in Streamlabs, so that's why it sounds so loud. There was a body in the reactor on the far left. I saw Jeff coming from that direction. <laughs> but I but I went all the way to the top right. No, 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 no. I, I literally just saw Jeff in the bottom right. Uh, no, sorry. Um, at the garbage disposal on the bottom that storage area because I was emptying out the, the garbage. Mm. It wasn't me. Yeah, it's Sean, it's Sean, it's Sean. It's Sean. <laughs> it was, look, I was, yeah, emptying out, I was emptying out the garbage and then no. I saw Jeff come from the left side. I stopped and I was like, okay, whatever. So I went to the reactor on the left and that's when I saw Jelena's body. No, it's Sean, come on. <laughs> it's Jeff. It's Jeff. That should be a little bit better. So I have my um, a new mic that I'm testing out and uh, I want to see how it sounds with every, everything running. There's a guy here? Uh, we'll worry about it later. Just rush through. So like I said, my audio was leveled a little bit too loud, but that's on my end. Other than that, I think it sounds fine. It's clearly not ASMR or audiophile quality, but I think for people who aren't looking to break the bank, that this is a really good, well-priced mic. 
And I think that that's enough for a gamer or a streamer or somebody who's just having Zoom meetings. Now let's move on to the issues that I did have. Granted, these issues aren't with the mic or the sound quality, but rather the build quality itself. Now, they aren't the biggest issues, and I think that they can be addressed and fixed in this next iteration, so probably the TC778. First, the pop filter arm should be removable, not just this pop filter, because when you take off the pop filter, the arm just kind of dangles here and you can't really do anything about it. But I'm anticipating that they're expecting more people to use it than not use it, which kind of makes sense. That could be why they decide to not even make a removable arm. But that's not the biggest thing. I guess if I were to change it, I'd move the removal point from here to down here. And my second issue is I wish that the bottom of the mic was a little bit longer because when I opened the microphone box for the first time and saw the microphone, it wasn't inside the bottom shock mount bands. It was hanging out like this, whereas it should be inside like this. And because of the shape of the mic, it almost wants to force itself to slide out of the bottom bands so it hangs. And it's always something that you have to readjust, which is kind of annoying. Again, this isn't a big deal in itself. But if I'm an average consumer who doesn't really pay attention to if it slides out and when it does slide out, wouldn't it just render the shock mount less effective? So those are my two biggest issues with the microphone. Again, it doesn't have anything to do with the audio quality because that still performs and this isn't a big deal, but I still think that these are important to address. So the question is, should you get this $40 budget microphone? Well, it does have an unremarkable build quality and there are issues pertaining to the build, but they only pertain to the build and not how the microphone sounds, which is the most important part. It does come with a shock mount, a pop filter, and a windsock, which are really good inclusions for the price. And it does help you get that little leg up in terms of audio quality. And the audio quality isn't bad. It's not gaming headset quality, but it's also not ASMR audio file quality. But for $40, you can't really argue the price to quality ratio. It's not a $300 microphone, nor is it trying to be a $300 microphone. Again, this is for average consumers who are looking to buy a decent quality mic without breaking the bank. And I think this hits that point perfectly. If you're looking for a low priced microphone and don't mind the build quality and thought my audio test was perfectly fine, then this might be the product for you. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the toner TC777. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought. Shout out to my patron Oki, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.